In this week's Torah portion, we have the most seminal events in the entire Bible. After the Jews leave Egypt, they go to Mount Sinai, they accept the Torah, God's guidebook for life. And while they're waiting for Moses to come down from heaven, who's receiving the tradition from God himself, the Jewish people miscalculate the timing of Moses' descent from heaven to the mountain, and they construct this golden cap to serve as a replica or as a a conduit to replace Moses, whom they feared had died. Very difficult story to understand. But we know that Moses descends, sees this happening, and smashes the tablets of the law, which he had brought down to teach the Jewish people. And he goes back up to heaven for another 40 days, begs forgiveness from God on behalf of the Jewish people, is granted forgiveness by God, and on Yom Kippur, he descends again with a second set of tablets, with God's forgiveness also in hand, and those are the tablets that endure. And the Sporno, one of the great medieval rabbis, asks a very simple question. If you look at the text, the Torah tells us that God told Moses up in heaven, go back, leave me, because the Jewish people are committing an atrocity. They're worshiping this golden calf. So if Moses knew what was going on down on earth, why did he descend with the tablets of the law? He should have left them up in heaven. They weren't deserving of it. And the Sporno gives us such a powerful answer. He says, if you look at the words... The Torah says that God told them that they worship the calf, a golden calf, an idol. So Moses thought, okay, this is a terrible thing, but I can go down there and we can work this out and I can talk to them and then we can continue a dialogue and make up for the mistake. But when he descends, the Torah shifts language and says that Moses saw the people that they were dancing and playing musical instruments. When Moses saw that they had not just made a mistake, but they were celebrating their mistake, They had deceived themselves. They were not being honest with their mistake. That's when he knew that he had to do a counteracting act, a move that was so powerful enough to get their attention. He had to commit an act that was commensurate to the level by which they had reached. The only thing that he had, the only leverage that he had, so to speak, was these tablets in his hand. So for him to yell and scream and cry would not have done justice. It wouldn't have accomplished anything because of the state that the Jewish people were in. Again, not just admitting admitting their mistake, but celebrating it, going further and further, wallowing in it. So the only move that Moses had left was just simply to smash the tablets. That would get the attention of the Jewish people, and that's indeed what happened. In other words, Moses is telling us such a powerful lesson. Moses understood they made a mistake. First of all, as an educator, your your children at you're always educating your children as a teacher. And even as a Jew, you're always educating another Jew by the way you act in the store, by the way you live. If you made a mistake, you must own up to it. It's not easy. We have a lot of pride and ego. If you own up to it and you're honest about it, you can repair. But if you celebrate your mistakes, if you double down, then the only thing that can get you out of that quicksand is a counteracting measure that may be so painful but necessary. And our job is to do something before we get to that point. Moses, in the greatness that he inhabited, the wisdom of Moses, the greatest educator that we ever had, understood that this was the only move he had left. And if that didn't work, then indeed the Almighty would make the Jewish people extinct and he would have restarted the entire nation with just Moses and his family. Thank God, thank goodness that worked. That ploy worked. And Moses came down with God's forgiveness 40 days later. Powerful lesson. You know, we just finished Purim, the time of our reacceptance of the Torah. That's what the Megillah says, that the Jewish people at times of Mordechai, Esther, and Haman reaccepted and reaffirmed their love of the Torah. And the Almighty considered it almost as a second, a recreation, as it were, of the original giving of the Torah. How did they do that, the Jews? They accepted it, and then they made this mistake. They doubled down, but they were able to see that one last glimmer of hope, that one last message, that desperate cry of Moses when he smashed the tablets, when nothing else would work. If nothing else, we have to look for that one last glimmer of hope, one last little message to pull us out of that quicksand so that we can rise again like the Jewish people did after that terrible era. Shabbat Shalom. And may we all continue to rise above our mistakes, be honest about our mistakes, certainly not to double down with them, and just be brutally honest where we stand and where we need to grow and accomplish. Shabbat Shalom.